second question. This will be for Dana, Danny, Lynn, Priscilla, and John. So you'll be going first. Okay. Last November, 68% of citizens voted no to a change in the town's form of government. Had it passed, Summerfield would have changed the current council management form of government the town has operated under since 2007, back to the mayor council form the town originally had when it incorporated in 1996. Were you in favor of this <coughs> referendum and why? So, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I was in favor of the referendum. Uh, what I do uh, support is a government that is close to the people. Uh, that is representative of the people, and I feel like with uh, transparency and, and openness and uh, communication, we can get there operating under a manager council form of government. So no, I wouldn't necessarily say I was, I was for that transition. I think with good controlled leadership from a council, um, uh, it's a great form of government and it's very effective. Dana? Uh, in terms of the referendum, it was to put the um, item on the ballot so the citizens could decide. And that was the key to it. It was for the citizens to be able to have the opportunity to vote and decide. So I was for letting the citizens decide. Um, in terms of uh, the operation of the town, it is the town council's job and responsibility to set the policies of the town. And it's the manager's um, responsibility to make sure that those policies are followed, and so that is what I um, that is what I support. Um, I think that's what we need to get back to. We need to look at the policies and make sure that they're being enforced, and look at the statutes and make sure they're being followed. Annie. Okay, I'm here to represent the people, and I was part of those petitions, so to say that uh, I was for it, yes, uh, I was, because I want the people to be heard, and I believe in the voters and their decisions. It was defeated, and therefore I'm perfectly fine with that the way it turned out. Uh, the people spoke, and I will certainly honor that, uh, that result. So that's about all I can say. Williams you have to ask yourself, have you read the comprehensive plan? Have you read the proposed UDO? Um, I actually had to go ask questions because that's something I don't sleep, eat, and drink. And I believe that we need to have a form of government so we have somebody that when a, any issue comes to us, we can look at that individual issue. We can do our best to make sure that it supports <coughs> what our citizens have told us that it needs to support. And then we have those people um, at the town hall who sleep, eat, and drink it and say, yes, you've dotted your I's. Yes, you've crossed your T's. Yes, you've met all the check boxes. Um, so I believe that we do need um, a government. Sean? Uh, I was not in favor of changing the form of government. The people had spoken and spoken twice before. Um, so uh, I didn't feel another referendum was necessary. <laughs> However, uh, I made the motion to put it on the ballot because that's uh, because all the uh, qualifications were met for, uh, for uh, putting it on the ballot. Um, I think that uh, our town operates the best with a professional manager who governs the day or takes care of the day to day while uh, the council sets policy. And I'd like to end and uh, consider it. Uh, that the, the best form of government for us. Okay. Another 60 second question. Dana, BJ, Lynn Williams Devaney, Rich Slogan, and John. With the rise of social media, civility in all aspects of discourse, especially political discourse, has suffered terribly. If elected, what will you do specifically to encourage a more reasoned and civil approach to the use of this form of communication in those areas you can influence? Anna? 
I personally do not uh, participate in social media, and that is one of the reasons why, because of the negativity associated with it. Unfortunately, this town um, has, uh, has experienced that negativity. One of the things that is necessary in our personnel policy is a social media policy to prevent um, employees from arguing with citizens on Facebook and so forth and in social media that's inappropriate um, it is also against our ethics policy and our personnel policy but it hasn't prevented that from happening unfortunately uh, I uh, also think that our town Facebook page should not allow comments and arguments I think that should be left um, outside the town I think the town uh, Facebook page should be informational it should be for the citizens to get information and they can submit questions to the to the town manager, but I don't think it um, should be a vehicle for uh, for people to be ugly and nasty and, and argue. I just don't think that's appropriate. So those are some of the things that I think need to change. BJ? I agree. I don't like ugly and nasty. I won't. I think that uh, basically I fight for people and I fall all my life for people to have freedom of speech and be able to say what they want to say, when they want to say it, how they want to say it as long as it's not offensive and not uh, not bothering the children or anything like that. The issue that I have, to be honest with you, about uh, about social media is that there's oftentimes so many lies, and I will not allow, not as mayor, not as sheriff, not as any, uh, as a human being, a lie to go unanswered. And if there is a problem with it, I'm going to say it. And if it hair lips Georgia, then it hair lips Georgia. But, but folks, if you're going to get on social media, you need to know you got to have your big boy pants on. <laughs> And you got to be prepared at all times for what uh, what may come across. But again, there is too much that goes on there that is not based on fact, but based on innuendo and people trying to make a point by uh, downgrading someone else. And that, to be quite frank with you, I don't like that. And that that uh, that would be something I would support. Lady Williams, Devaney. We need to use social media like we tell our kids to use social media. Um, I have used social media for my campaign, my uh, Facebook website. It's all positive. I believe that if you truly have great leadership, it is a trickle-down effect. It will bring civility and unity to our town. And when I'm elected, that's how I'm going to use social media. Rich Slogan. Uh, I'm not a big user of social media. I guess it's because of my advanced age. I just never got, never got into it that much. But uh, I guess some of that stuff left me behind. Um, I'm not a big user of social media because I think people say things that they would not say face to face. I prefer to communicate with people face to face or by talking with them you know, uh, on the phone or whatever. Uh, but the, you know, social media can get very nasty. There's a lot of uh, misstatement there. People often use social media to elicit a response from the person they're attacking that uh, is to their advantage. Um, again, um, i just rather not use social media. I guess it's, uh, I'm 66 years old and it's going to be hard for me to change now. I prefer to communicate face to face. John? Definitely not for the meek out there uh, these days. Um, uh, social media is a powerful tool and it can be used to do a lot of good and uh, I think that's what we should focus on um, is, is how to bring people together using social media, either virtually or, um, and, or uh, through uh, some type of advertising of an event. So, and I think we do that fairly well. Uh, can we do better? I'm, I'm sure we can. Um, and, I, and I like the idea, I started doing it recently, of doing some Facebook Live, uh, talking about, hey, this is what we're doing in our community. Uh, again, promoting uh, events and, uh, and the good things that are happening in, in our town. And I, I like the links to teach, use social media like we tell our kids to use social media. Treat people like we like, like we want to be treated ourselves. I think those things are important. Um, and uh, again, it's a, it's a powerful tool, it can do a lot of good, and that's what we're going to focus on. Okay, this one's going to be a challenge for you all. 30 seconds. <laughs> As a newly elected or re-elected mayor or council person representing the town and citizens, would you maintain and support your oath of office to be consistent with the Constitution and laws of North Carolina and the United States 
even if legal counsel advised otherwise. Reese? When you lay your hand on the Bible, you're kind of committed. The answer to me is yes. Priscilla? Uh, I'm not a lawyer, uh, so I would have to depend on um, certain counsel and uh, I would certainly need the town of Somerville to back me up. Um, so yes, I would absolutely uphold uh, the oath uh, to the Constitution. EJ? Absolutely. I've done it every time that I've been sworn in. I swore to uphold the Constitution. I did it as a Marine. I've done it as a Deputy Sheriff. I've done it numerous times as Sheriff. Absolutely. I wanted to make sure that you understood that there was a, a latter part to it. Uh, was it would you uphold the Constitution even if uh, your legal, legal counsel, counsel advised otherwise? I'm going to uphold the Constitution, period. Legal counsel, as far as that goes, I would hope would not be recommending something that would go against the the Constitution. <laughs> if they do, then you might want to consider getting other legal counsel. <laughs> 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 can, I, can I just say ditto? I would definitely yes, uphold the yes, counsel. Right. I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's no higher authority other than the command up there than the Constitution. Okay, this will be for John, Priscilla, Tim, BJ, and Rich. This is 60 seconds. According to Robert's Rules, a quick start guide, meetings are often synonymous with wasted time, frustration, and dread, and, quote, <coughs> expose the pettiness and frailty of the human ego. Many think such is the case with our council meetings over the last few years. What do you think? And would you do anything to change the tone and productivity of council meetings? John? The last two years have been pretty tough. Uh, I, I have uh, I've done my best. It has not been easy. It's uh, like watching Robert's Rules in reverse. Uh, it, uh, uh, the rules are there. Or Robert's Rules are, are fairly easy to follow, the get into the details it might be a little complicated, but it's, it's, it's fairly com commonsensical stuff. Um, I even went as far as to start drafting a set of rules of order that were um, much more scaled down from Robert's. Um, I just decided in the environment they probably wouldn't be followed, and, and uh, thought I would spend my time and my talent on some other things until we, uh, until we got a new board elected. I can behave in public. I don't interrupt. I don't speak out of turn. I try not to argue, uh, if at all possible. So no, I don't need Robert or his rules to be able to conduct myself in a professional, respectful, responsible way. Tim? I think we did that when we were the mayor. Uh, we ran good meetings. We ran productive meetings. We ran meetings that were respect to, uh, respectful of all the citizens and everyone's input, listening to what everyone had to say. And uh, took time to do that, but still uh, also moved our meetings along, got things done. So I absolutely would be interested in going back to an environment that is like that, that provides that opportunity to be civil, to make good decisions, and move our community forward. BJ? Definitely, Robert's rules are important. They give everybody a level playing field that they can go by, and that's exactly what they're for. And so I would be very supportive of the Robert's rules and making sure that the rules are adhered to and to not be special favoritism show just because you happen to like somebody or you like what they're having to say. Rich? I also believe in Robert's rules of order. Um, I think the meeting should be uh, concise, they should be uh, uh, orderly, and things should get to be done in, uh, in a fairly quick manner. Uh, I think that's one reason we don't have a lot of people coming to meetings anymore um, because uh, some of the atmosphere uh, in the meetings. Um, I think if we if we have a chance to have a new uh, town council now, and if we uh, have positive meetings, people will want to come, 
and uh, I think we'll get better participation uh, from the uh, citizens. Okay, this this question is from Tim, Dana, Danny, then Williams, Devaney, and Sean. Forty-five seconds. Do you su support allowing commercial development on any fifty to two hundred acre parcel in Summerfield? Tim. No. Dan? No, uh, there are major thoroughfares that are appropriate for such development, but uh, as I stated earlier, the uh, overcrowding and the traffic on some of the two lane roads, it's just not appropriate. It's not conducive to commercial development. And there, are, you know, if you look at throughout the town, you have many areas, Pleasant Ridge Road, Scalesville 150, many areas where you have large tracts of land. Um, and we do not need to go um, with high density zoning, and we do not need to go with commercialization on those roads. Danny, I agree 100 percent. There is a place for them. There's a place for uh, commercial development, and the major thoroughfares they have the roads to handle the traffic and everything. So I'll be definitely against uh, commercial and those type of traffic. No, Sean. Commercial does not belong in residential areas. It belongs along major thoroughfares, period, end of story. Okay, we're going to come back again to the previous question for Priscilla, BJ, Lynn, Rich, and Sean. The zoning board is working on the final recommendations for Article 4, which includes two new zoning districts for consideration. If the board recommends two units per acre in the town core and commercial mixed with residential on any parcel 50 to 200 acres in the open space mixed use district, will you vote yes? Priscilla? No, no. Um, we need to keep our overall density. There was the um, uh, geographic study that clearly stated that we need to keep our overall density at 1.3 uh, units per acre. Um, with this new village overlay map, um, it was 625 acres that was going to be subjected to two units per acre. Um, thankfully, the zoning board um, took out the existing town core overlay uh, so that removed approximately 396 acres, which leaves 326 acres, 0.47 for two units per acre. Uh, I do not support that. Summerfield Road cannot handle it. Neither can our elementary schools. Uh, I absolutely do not support that, and I do not support mixing commercial in any 50 to 200 acre parcel. I also agree that it should be kept on major thoroughfares, and I also feel like the town of Summerfield needs a land use plan so we can smartly plan. Okay. No on commercial mix uh, as far as the two per acre. Uh, basically, it's going to, we've already got it, as has already been said. We've already got some part of it here. What we need to do is take a look at what the land will allow and what the septic and the water will allow. All these are things that are there, but if they're within that particular area and they're already there, then that's the type of thing that you end up looking at. But the density, as far as that, as far as that goes for the commercial mix, I'm not for that at all. As far as the commercial and mix, no. As far as the town core, um, yeah, it's 300 plus acres. You take out the school, the fire department, and all that. That whittles it down, and. Um, I believe that if you look at revitalization and also it is going to be dependent upon uh, water resources, um, will the land perk, what, and what is it? I will not make any decision unless I hear from my town. I know what it is and everything has been checked off the list. So as far as giving you a straight answer with a hypothetical question, I need to see it on a case-by-case -case basis and I need to make sure that it matches everything that the town wants and has put into any type of a UDO that is in line with our comprehensive plan. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Um, I am not in favor of uh, commercial mix, so I say no to commercial mix. Um, as far as two units uh, per acre, um, we have to get input from the residents of this area. I know some people might be in favor of, favor of it, but uh, a lot are not. So it would depend on the input from the people in this area. One problem with water, there are some contaminated wells in this area, uh, in the town core area. And the water capacity is really kind of an unknown. You know, how much uh, water capacity do we have in this area? What can the aquifer handle? Uh, and uh, the aquifer in this area of, North, of uh, Summerfield, uh, well, in this area of, of uh, North Carolina, it does not have a lot of capacity. And uh, maybe I'll get into that in a later question. Uh, it, it was, uh, well, my time's up. But, uh, I think the concern is, <clears throat> the concern is this. The reality is, yes, there are some two unit per acre zoning. We shouldn't be adding to that. We shouldn't be expanding the town core zone without the input and the approval of the people who will be affected most by it. In the past, we've always had folks who said, boy, it'd be really great to revitalize downtown and go with meat shops and things like that. The problem is they didn't live there. But some of our neighbors, many of our neighbors, do and we need to be sensitive to what their concerns are with noise, with traffic, with after hour deliveries. If this is going to be mixed use, we have to be sensitive to the people they're going to be most impacted by the runoff and the, and the water discharge and how we retain water. Rich, John, Priscilla, Amy, and BJ, you'll get 45 seconds for this one. What is your position on retaining the town's rural character and how would allowing multifamily housing within the town limits factor into that? Yeah, uh, well, allowing multifamily housing inside the uh, town of Summerfield greatly affected. Uh, not only would it affect uh, water resources, uh, or septic system uh, resources, uh, you know, how would these be handled? Uh, also, uh, you know, it would not comply with our uh, current town density of uh, 1.3 units per acre. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah, I'm not in favor of that at all. I'd like to keep the town density where it is. Um, it's manageable. And again, I'll bring up the water resources. The uh, aquifer in this area, in this area of North Carolina, and this was cited in the town compre Summerfield Comprehensive Plan. Uh, based on the, I'm, I'm reading from the plan, uh, from the comprehensive plan itself, based on the Daniel Harnett USGS study, the ratio of housing unit to land area allocation was eventually coded into town zoning ordinance and has been the standard for development density in Summerfield for the past decade. So that's the current stand we, ha we have was set up because of the water resources we have. John? Can you read the question again, Michael? What is your position on retaining the town's rural character and how would allowing multifamily housing within the town limits factor into that? Um, there's, something, there's something in contradiction between multi-factor and rural character. Those two things don't jive. Um, we already are seeing farms selling off. 